Hey folks, welcome to the Do Yourself Dad channel and welcome to the middle of the Mojave Desert. We are camping out here with our little home away from home, our trailer, and we're powering it all with solar. Now that's not just the 12 volt, we're powering all of the 110 sockets with solar as well. So we've got 400 watts of panels here, feeding into our Anchor 767 powerhouse unit. And what's really nice about this unit, the reason I went with it, is you notice right there, it's got a regular 30 amp plug, which means we can plug the shore power of our trailer straight into the unit. And with that, we should be able to run every single thing in the trailer. So to go over what all this thing's got on board, it's got four regular 110 sockets of 30 amp, two 12 volt sockets. So these are for like cigarette lighter style accessories for your car, and then a regular USB and a USB type C output as well. So on the back side, this is how you charge the unit. You've got basically two options. You've got your uh, wall current. So this is where you would plug in if you were charging it off the wall. And then this is your solar input. And it comes with this little guy. And this is actually different than some of the other panels that I've had. It's got this XT90 style connector and then it goes off to the panels. So what's great here is I've got two 200 watt panels giving me 400 watts of charging, but I can actually do more. This thing will take up to a thousand watts of power and I've got another 400 watts of panels at home. Now, right now, this seems to be fitting the bill. I haven't had any issues. This thing's basically been running at close to 100% all day and I've been doing things like running the fans, microwaves, all the other appliances on board. So you'll have to excuse the mess inside the trailer. We're not those van lifers, we actually use our camping equipment. But inside here, you can see I've got, now all of these lights are running off of our 12 volt battery, which is a lithium. And I've actually got a video on that. If you want to check that out, I'll have a link down below. But in here, I've also got my TV running. We're watching some uh, Ace Ventura right now. Coming over here to just show you the microwave. So you can see this thing has no problem running the microwave. So now let's make our way over to the biggest power draw. And that is this thing. You can hear right there, it kicked on. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that is just in the fan mode, it pulls about 300 watts. I've tried to power the air conditioner with this thing, it doesn't work. The air conditioner is pulling a little bit too much on the initial startup for that thing to handle, but I have something I'm gonna have in a video coming up that will allow you to run that thing on one of these or on a smaller generator. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, hit subscribe, it'll be coming out soon. And if it's already out, I'll have it linked in the description down below. Now our travel trailer is a pretty small travel trailer. So its power demands are actually pretty low to be honest. So let's torture this thing and see if I can power my entire house with it. Now, before we go to try to power the whole house with this thing, I wanted to figure out what was going on here because in theory, this thing should be able to power the air conditioner on my trailer. On startup, that thing pulls about 2000 watts and that thing should be capable of that. So I wanna try something on the workbench here. Now I've cleared a little hole. I'm sorry the rest of the garage is a mess, but this is what I wanna try. In a previous video, I installed that thing. That is a infrared heater above my workbench and that thing pulls about 1500 watts. So I'm gonna come down here. I've got it plugged in or I'm going to plug it in and we're gonna try powering that thing. I've also got my heat gun plugged in. My theory is that it's the sudden surge of power that the air conditioner needs and not just that it can't handle the load. So we've got it hooked up here. Take our remote, we're gonna turn on that heater. And you can see here with the heater on, it's pulling about 1300 watts. Now I'm gonna come in and turn on my heat gun in the low setting. And now we're pulling about 2000 watts. You can hear the cooling fans now on the um, anchor unit here. So now I wanna try kicking the uh, heat gun here all the way up. And it's pushing out 2,700 watts. So that should be more than enough to power my air conditioner. So that kind of confirms my theory that this thing can push enough wattage. The issue is that I believe that it's the sudden surge of wattage that this thing isn't able to push, but this thing should take care of it. I'm gonna save this for another video, but this is a inline soft start that you can run on a smaller generator to power air conditioners and things like that in a trailer, but that'll be in another video. Let's go try to power the house. So now we're back home and where I live, I live in Southern California. They turn off our power every time the wind blows because of brush fires, every time it rains, somebody hits a power pole. So I see, seem to get power outages a lot in our house. And I'm gonna show you what I did to backfeed our house. Now we are backfeeding our house through this transfer switch. I've got a whole video on this transfer switch and how I'm normally powering it with this generator here in my side yard. But today I've got the cable running over there into the powerhouse. 
and being charged up by my two panels. Now it is a little bit overcast, so we're not getting a full 400 watts into the panels, but what I'm curious about is can this thing power my house? Now I don't have this transfer switch powering everything. It's powering my important circuit. So it's powering my refrigerator, all of my aquariums, my koi pond to keep all the critters alive, and the switches and the lights in the house. It's not powering things, of course, like the air conditioner or the heat. We're in Southern California. It's pretty mild here. So let's start flipping switches and see if we can get all these circuits energized with that and see what it's actually pulling and if it can handle it. Okay, so we're gonna be monitoring each switch as we flip it with this, but I'm actually gonna put it right here up on the screen. We're gonna go to our very first switch here and flip it. And that is actually our koi pond. It's pulling 168 watts. And if we turn around here, come over here, you can see our waterfall is happy. It's running. So let's go back over to the panel. The rest of these should be our interior switches. We're gonna to go to our next one. As soon as I flip that, we went up to 400, about 500 watts. Let's keep kicking switches here. And see how much this thing will take. That was my refrigerator circuit. We're pulling about 861, 869, it's 857. Let's keep going. Just over a thousand watts there. And our final switch has a few lights on it. I think a lot of them are off right now. So now let's go inside and see what's running. And we we'll, might be able to see, I don't know if it'll be able to connect with Bluetooth, but we're gonna leave the Bluetooth running out here to see what we can see. So let's go inside. Okay, so it's a little dark in here. Let's kick on some lights. So the lights are running. My aquarium over here is running, which means the heater and all the pumps are running. Got my light overhead here. That's running on the battery. We can go over to our hallway light. Kick that on. See, that's up there running right now. So all the necessaries inside my house are running. I've got other aquariums elsewhere in the house that are also purring away on the battery as well. So it all seems to be working and working well. So you can see here, I still have all my lines flipped over. I have almost all my lights running in the house right now and we're pulling just over a thousand watts. So this thing actually has a bunch of overhead on it. Now, the one thing to take note of is if you come up here, I have 54 minutes remaining and that's at 60% battery. So right now with 60%, I got 54 minutes, which means I roughly have an hour and 45 minutes, two hours of juice. Now we're not conserving anything right now. Everything's turned on. So you could probably back things down a little bit. If you just wanted to run the basics in your house, you can run everything for about two hours. That's including a fridge, aquariums, pumps, heaters, and all that good stuff. Now, that's also taking into account that I really don't have much in the way of solar coming in. And that's because even though I have 400 watts of solar out, I'm only generating between 50 and 100 watts because it is really, really overcast today. So we're not getting any direct sunlight. So now that I've run my whole trailer with it, my house with it, played around with the solar, let's talk about the pros and cons of this thing and where I think this thing kind of fits in into the generator, solar generator kind of world out there. Now, this is the largest one of these I have and I am impressed with it. Um, I can power pretty much everything I need to power off this thing and that big having the 30 amp plug is really nice especially for power in the house and powering my trailer also having the smaller outlets is nice because it means I can plug my house or my trailer into it and also charge smaller devices right off the unit here also being able to power all the plugs with my phone is really nice as well some of my other units don't do that so that means I can have this thing plugged in outside sitting in the back of my truck in my trailer and I can conserve juice and when I wanna run something like the TV or the microwave, I can flip it on with my phone. I can also monitor how much juice it's actually pulling, which is a pretty cool feature. In case you notice, it does have wheels and it actually has this little handle that comes out the side so you can really wheel it around like a suitcase, which even my gas generators don't have. They at least have wheels, but the handles aren't really convenient. And if you get the smaller generators, which is really more what this is comparable to, you're basically picking it up and lugging it around and throwing it at your back. So. Those are the pros. Now, as we know, not everything's perfect. So I wanna point out the couple of things that you should be aware of before you decide whether or not you wanna purchase one of these. First thing to notice is right here on the back, these solar panels are not waterproof. There's a literally little frowny face right there next to the rain. So if you wanna leave these things outside, you really shouldn't, you really couldn't. But the biggest issue with these is this. These all plug into this connector and the way this thing is designed, you see those little copper heads right there? Every one of those copper heads is connected to these two lines. So if you've got solar coming in, all of these little connectors right there are hot, which means you could technically get hurt. You could zap yourself on these things if they come in contact with anything. And then the other thing is they're obviously, because they're like that, not waterproof. So you get some water on there, you could wind up getting an arc in between those two points as well. 
But the other thing to consider is you don't actually have to use these panels. You can use any panel as long as you're not going over a thousand watts. And there's also a voltage limitation. I don't remember what it is, but I'll put it right down there. And that's also a consideration when you're setting up your solar array, depending upon how you want to power these things. Just remember that however you're doing it, if you're making adapters, you will have to adapt it down to that XT connector to go into the back of the generator. Now, it's not all bad with these panels. These are nice panels. They are 200 watt panels. And when I had them out in the desert, they were cooking along, bringing me in almost 400 watts with more direct sunlight. And they do fold up really nice. These little kickstands are nice and uh, they have a little handles. So they're really easy to get around if you're taking these things camping and need to pop them up and pop them down. So now it comes down to what do I think this is a good replacement for if you're going out of the gas generator world? I think this is a good replacement if you're replacing like a 1500 watt uh, inverter generator. That's really kind of what this thing does. And it has that outlet, which makes powering your trailer or anything like that a lot easier than if you were running it off of one of those, because most of those 1500 watt generators are not going to have this. This thing actually can push more than what those can push. It's not a replacement for the 3000 to 3500 watt generators, which is what I typically power my house with, but it is a good backup or if you only have to run things for a short period of time. I do think this is excellent for camping, especially if you're not having to run your air conditioner all day, because this thing will bleed that down pretty quick. This thing ran us for days out in the desert and pretty much kept itself topped off with the solar because I was only using it to power things like the microwave and small appliances in the trailer. So most of the time we were only pulling one to 200 watts out of it, but it had that overhead to get up and power everything that we really needed. So I think that's really your best use for one of these things. I love it because I can go camping, I can power all my stuff and not run my generators. So if we are in a campground that has quiet hours, I can run all my stuff anytime I want because I'm not firing up a gas generator. Now I hope this video helped you out, but I'm sure people have a lot of questions that I have not answered. So if you have any of those questions, please leave them down in the description below. I'm happy to answer those questions for you so you can make an informed purchasing choice. I will have a link for this one down in the description as well as the other uh, battery packs that I've used in the past so you can compare and contrast and make a good purchase decision for you. Now if this video helped you out please give it a great big thumbs up that really does help the channel it helps us bring more stuff like this to the channel. Please hit that subscribe button because we've always got awesome DIY content and reviews like this coming your way and of course thanks for watching.